Let's talk about learning programming in 2022. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogajan, AKA the Seattle Data Guy. Today, we're gonna focus on answering the question, how should you learn programming in 2022? And is it even worth it? So let's answer that backwards by first discussing, is programming even worth learning in 2022? Or is the hype train over? Now, personally, I think we're very far away from anyone or really anything writing perfect code on the first time without having some sort of human intervention just to check out to make sure that that code is accurate. Sure, we have plenty of templated code out there, but we're still kind of writing our own custom cruds. So I think we're a couple, maybe decades away from code writing itself. So for those of you out there who are wondering, should you learn programming in 2022? I still see it as a very valuable tool on many different levels for many different roles whether you're a data scientist, an analyst, a data engineer, or a software engineer. Being able to automate your work will help you in processing tons of data and tasks that you need to do on a daily basis to increase productivity, which is the only way we can continue to believe that stonks will go up, which is increasing productivity for each person. So in order to do that, we need programming. So to answer the question, should you learn programming in 2022? This bullish ape says yes. Now the next question and the more important question is, how should you learn programming in 2022? There really are so many options. You know, you could go to college and get a CS degree, and you could also just go online and learn everything there is to know about programming from the thousands, if not millions of Medium articles that exist, all to give you an intro on how to learn Python. To help simplify learning programming, I've broken it down into five phases. So let's go over those five phases next. Here is how I view the five phases of programming as well as some resources that you can use to get through each of those phases more easily. Starting with phase number one, this is really about building your foundation. I consider this phase kind of your letters and words phase. Similar to learning how to talk, you first have to understand the basics, which is just what sounds do letters make and how do those sounds go together to make words. In this phase, you're gonna be learning about conditional statements, variables, functions, basic data structures, and maybe even a little bit about object-oriented programming, but just those basics, just the things that help you understand what all of this stuff does and how it all works together. And honestly, in order to learn at this phase, it's really hard to go wrong. Whether you go to a Udemy course, like in the links below to help support this channel, or you buy a basic book on Python programming or Java programming, this phase is really about just getting familiar with concepts that are kind of hard to understand. I personally recall how hard it was to first understand arrays, especially when I remember my first exam and my teacher had put a question about merging two arrays together and kind of, you know, organizing those numbers based on which one should go first. And at that point, I really only understood how to like point at different values in an array. So that question completely threw me off and I got it 100% wrong. But in all fairness, I passed the class and that class had somewhere in the range of like a 66% fail rate. So I'd say I'm doing pretty good. But again, at this phase, it's more about going to somewhere like Code Academy or again, a Udemy course or just getting a $15 Python coding book that just teaches you the basics because all you really need to know is how to write hello world how to write a conditional, kind of figure out what it is, how it operates, why you might want to use it, and just start playing with it and just start getting familiar and comfortable. The same way we start playing with sounds when we first start learning how to talk. You don't necessarily know how they're going to all go together in the future, but you know you need to understand them individually to eventually see the big picture. Now, once you understand the basics in this analogy, you know, words, phrases, letters, now we can start putting those together in paragraphs and sentences and maybe even the occasional essay. And this is where you start learning how to create your first programs. So this should be your first project phase or your kind of like first essay phase where you're just starting to put together your first examples of your work. I would recommend looking at Corey Schaefer's tutorials on putting together a Flask website because I think that's a great way to build your first application or program. You learn a ton in terms of like how everything interacts with each other beyond just things on your computer, but also maybe even something about ports and other slightly more nuanced concepts that aren't directly programming, but are very technical. And it's a great way to kind of build your first application that you can start showing people. I think that's the biggest win. It's here at this point, you can start showing people and, you know, maybe even building some sort of demo site for someone else. If you're trying to maybe get your first job by putting together your first project. And again, this is just your initial work. And just like when we were kids, your first few essays, are kind of terrible and they're poorly written 
you often have bad grammar, you're not gonna see the bigger picture at all times, and you're gonna kind of just be putting it together as you go along. But that leads you to the third phase of programming, which is you start exploring better programmers work and realizing you're kind of a terrible programmer. When you first start writing, if you were to look at a book like Les Mis or something like that and <laughs> compare your own skills to it, let's be real, you're kind of a terrible writer, but by reading these better pieces of work and reading, you know, good poetry or, you know, just good literature in general, you realize what it takes to actually write good works. In the same way, reading other people's code repos, as well as kind of picking a few books about solid programming design is a great way to realize you have a lot of extra room to grow. And so this is, I think, a constant phase that we all run into after we've kind of written some of our own applications and after we've gotten them to work, but for some reason, they're just not great. You're going to start looking into other people's code bases or maybe picking up a book on code design. For example, some of my favorite books involve the clean code handbook or refactoring and improving the design of existing code. Both of these books, I personally think are solid. And that's kind of a great step one in terms of like understanding how to improve your current status. Because in this phase, you're kind of in this, I'm a terrible programmer phase, which is great because you're looking for opportunities to improve that overall understanding of programming. So often step one in this phase is about looking for materials that will help you kind of improve and understand what good design looks like. Kind of like looking for books about what good writing looks like. And then kind of as a step two in this phase, you're gonna start looking at other people's code bases, like go open up the Postgres code base, go see how it's written. Or if you need something friendlier, I think the Python Asana uh, library was well-developed or at least is very simple to understand. Or at the very least, a great example of kind of a simple way to write code that can interact with an API. Also, it's written in Python, so I think that's friendlier for most people. Again, the point is just go out and read other people's work. Go through other people's code bases and see what you like, what you don't like, what you think is designed well, what you can understand almost immediately will often be well-designed code. And if something's maybe too abstract or maybe abstracted just perfect, you're probably gonna notice it because you've read a little bit about solid principle designs for programming, as well as maybe done a little bit in terms of like reading some of those books on refactoring. So you're gonna understand exactly what you're looking at. Like why did people make these decisions and see if you can kind of connect the dots because that's kind of this phase four, which is connecting all of these dots. Again, phase one is about understanding words. Phase two is really about putting together all of those words into your first few essays and paragraphs. Phase three is realizing that you're kind of bad at it. And phase four is after reflection and looking through other people's code bases, figuring out how you are going to now apply all of these techniques and skills into your future programming work. Now in this phase, it's a little harder to say where you can start finding resources. Most of what you need to do at this point is actual experience. So you need to go into work and actually try to test out some of these ideas. You know, try to take on a project at work where you're building maybe something like a microservice or something that's its own module. So it's just you and your design that's gonna go forward. And as you're doing it, you're gonna realize you have to make certain design decisions with how certain things interact with the database or maybe with how certain objects are designed. All of which will challenge you to remember all of the stuff you've just learned in the first three phases and now it's about implementation because that's the focus of this phase, implementation of techniques. And yes, you can build your own projects and that's also a great way. I just think it's also interesting to try to challenge yourself at work to figure out if you can start taking on your own projects and design concepts, which will slowly lead to phase five, which is software development, which is you're now going away from programming. You're going away from just coding things to work and trying to develop software at a higher scale. Maybe you're not even thinking as much about the code and thinking more about the design and the bigger picture. You know, at this phase, you're thinking about, well, if this is distributed, if this is, you know, going across, you know, multiple regions of the US or the world, how are we gonna manage to keep all of this data in sync? And there are a lot of other complex concepts you need to think about that are all stacked on top of each other. And this is not a day long journey. You know, all of these YouTubers are making videos about their 10 years in programming. And that's probably it for most people in terms of how long it's gonna take you to even get close to here. You're not going to be this amazing software developer day one or even year three. I think most of us don't even start getting decently good until year four or five, because we start realizing all the bad design decisions we made in year one, two, and three, and we start reflecting on it and improving upon it. Again, the same way as a writer, you're not a great writer often when you first start writing, but it takes crafting, practice, reflection, looking back at your old work, 
figuring out what little fine tunings you could do to really make it that much better. And it really is about crafting your skills and getting better. Sadly, in years two and three, we have to spend a ton of time uh, practicing for interview questions. So that can slow us down in terms of learning how to build better code, but that's how the world is. So if you're out there and wondering if you should learn programming in 2022, the answer is yes. And here are the five phases that you can apply in order to learn programming in 2022. Again, you're probably only going to get through phase maybe one and start phase two, where you're starting to build your own projects. But the journey of 10,000 steps starts with step one. So if you're looking to learn programming in 2022, I wish you the best of luck. Check out the resources below. And if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Other than that, I will see you guys next time. And I really just want to say, Thank you so much and goodbye.